Hello, Year 7. Mrs Barker here again. Now, some of you um, will be set this work by your teachers. So if you're seeing this, um, your teachers ask you to do this as your first lesson of the week. Not everyone will be, though, so don't panic if you've been set it and a friend hasn't. Neither of you are necessarily doing the wrong thing, OK? Um, for this lesson, you can either complete your work on um, a computer um, or you could even cut bits out of a magazine as you as you need to, or you can draw on paper, okay? Um, and I'll talk you through, because today you're going to get to make your own advert. That's good, isn't it? So let's go. Now, hopefully this will be a nice, fun piece of work, but there is a serious side to it as well. So what we're looking at today, our objective today is, can I use colour and font to appeal to a specific target audience? So when we say, can I use, we're thinking about what you are going to do. You are going to make something. You're going to make decisions that will work for an audience that you're going to choose. When we're thinking about a target audience, the target audience is who you will decide will use your, your chosen product. So you probably wouldn't advertise a car to a child because they're not going to buy it. Um, and I've put specific there because it's easy to say young people, but your definition of young is probably quite different to my definition of young. So young for you might mean age one to seven. It might mean, mean um, one to um, 16. Whereas I might see being young into well into your thirties because I'm very young and very beautiful. So um, you need to be really specific when you're saying what your target audience is. And we will come on to that in a minute, okay? So that's what we're doing today. So as I've mentioned before, your task today is to design your own advert. You're going to put into practice all we've learned over the last couple of lessons about colour and font. Um, there are instructions on the next few slides that will take you through the process step by step so that you can get everything done. It's important that you don't just rush in and just hurriedly make an advert now. Wait until I've gone through the, the next steps because some bits will make it easier and some bits will make your product um, more interesting and some bits will help you um, focus very clearly on how to address your target audience. The first thing to do is to choose or design a product. Now, you are very welcome to come up with a brand new product. If that's the kind of thing that you love doing, you go for it. It could be a brand new shampoo. It could be a brand new invention. Anything at all works. Um, it could be a new type of trainer. It could be a new luxury product like a smartwatch. Um, it could be a new GPS tr uh, chip that you put in your children's arms or, you know, whatever you like. Bit creepy that, but you could do it. Or you can choose a product that already exists, okay? So you could pick a shampoo, food product. Um, you could think about something like Amazon and make an advert for them, okay? If you do something that already exists, you are allowed to go and get photos of the product from online. So the, the positive side of, of picking something that already exists is that you can the product is already designed for you. You have to design around it. OK, so you'd be very welcome to, to um, cut and paste um, a picture of a perfume, for example, and put it in the middle of your poster and, and design everything else yourself. Or you can design something completely new. It's totally up to you. Now you've got your product, you need to think about your target audience. So this is the group of people who are going to use your product. You need to think about their age, their interests, so what they like doing. and if it's appropriate, which it often is, the dominant gender who will be using your product, okay? So, when you think about a product like Pantene shampoo, it is marketed, it is aimed at women, its target audience is women. There isn't a particular reason to this, if you think about the product of shampoo. Men and women wash their hair, you know? Um, however, when you think about the scent of the shampoo, when you think about the language they used to describe the shampoo, it is very clearly aimed at women. The colours on the bottle are aimed at women. The picture of the person using it is a woman. Um, and if you look at my, my favourite adverts, the ones where you look at them and they're um, skincare products aimed at men and women. So a woman will have a scrub, a face scrub, and it will give her a youthful appearance. Whereas a man, he'll have a... a a different type of product. He, he'll, he may have a scrub, but it will energize, you know, and it, <laughs> the languages for products for men and women are completely different. Um, so 
you need to know what the what the target audience of your product is so that you can use the right language so that you can use the right colors products for men for skincare colors tend to be a navy blue they tend to um, have often accents of bright orange women's products have a whole range of colors but the the, the range of colors for men is a lot smaller um, if you're doing a product, if you're aiming a product at teenage boys or teenage girls, again, the colours will be different. Um, and they'll be different from older men and older women as well. So it's really worth thinking about who you're thinking about. So you might come up with something like, my target audience is women and men aged 26 to 45 who enjoy physical exercise and staying healthy. That'd be something like a Fitbit or a smartwatch, for example. Or, my product will appeal to children aged 7 to 15, but must also appeal to their parents who will buy the product. So it needs to seem both healthy and fun. And this is a really important point when you're thinking about um, a, a target audience of children. Children don't generally go and buy their own stuff. Okay, they don't have money coming in. They don't, a child may want a particular product, but they have to ask someone to get it for them. So you've got to think about who's paying for it. And we're going to come on to that in the next slide. So when we're thinking about who's going to pay for the product, it means we've got to appeal to more than one target audience. So we've got to be a bit clever about how we do that. So let's think about a product like Dairy Lee. We want children to want it because if children don't want it, they're not going to eat it. OK, therefore, their parents won't buy it. But if we're going to get children to want it, then we need to make their parents happy to buy it. So if we're selling Dairy Lee, we'll tell the kids it's great, it's fun, it's delicious. We'll tell the parents it's healthy. We'll talk about it having milk in it. We'll talk about it um, being easy and delicious, which appeals to parents who are in a, in a rush, perhaps. OK, even a product like Kinder Eggs, which is just chocolate and a plastic toy i mean it's not really very good for anybody certainly not the environment but even kinder eggs promote the fact they have lots of milk and cocoa they forget to mention the sugar you know <laughs> but they they talk about the milk and the cocoa the other thing you can do so you can either say hey kids this is great and parents it's also brilliant or you can just make a product seem like such a must-have for kids that they're, that they're going to pester their parents. It's called pester power. They're going to pester their parents for it without mercy. These are often one-off items such as toys or low-cost items, treat items, basically. So you're not going to have a really unhealthy um, cereal. Um, even cereals that aren't very healthy will always talk about how healthy they are. They'll, they'll, it's whole grain, for example. Things like Kinder Eggs, they're marketed as being a treat, a small, affordable treat. So it's either a, a one-off item or it's a low-cost item. And I know my son gets me with the Kinder Egg thing and I look at it and go, oh, it's a waste of money and it's just plastic. But I'm sure it's a 70p and it's a nice treat if he's been good all day while I've been dragging him around shops, you know. So, um, so those are the two approaches you can have in terms of appealing to your target audience. Next, you need to choose your main image. So if it's going to be the product, you either need to search for the product or design your product. Are you going to have a person using it? If so, who's the person going to be? You don't really want a 56 year old accountant playing with a Kinder Egg. That's not going to appeal to children, is it? Um, if you're looking at shampoo, you're generally going to have someone who's got nice looking hair advertising the shampoo. Um, and it's quite interesting that some adverts kind of go a bit away from that, but most of them will stick with it. OK, it's someone in your target audience um, and they look happy using it. If they look miserable, it suggests your product isn't very good. So choose your main image, sketch it or search for it. Let's think back to the last couple of lessons and think about colour and your typography. Now, remember, we talked about type typography. Font is the shape of the writing. Typography is more than that. OK, so typography includes the font, the typeface. That's the same thing. Font and typeface are the same thing. It also includes the size, whether it's in bold, whether it's in italics, the direction of the text and a few other things as well. But it, it's all of it's the total way that the, that the text looks. What does it look like overall? So you need to think about what's going to appeal to your target audience. Don't use Comic Sans as a typeface to appeal to me because I won't like it but it might appeal to my two-year-old daughter, okay? So 
Think about um, all of those things. Think about how you're going to appeal to them. Think about the colours they're like. Do you want um, bright colours? Do you want muted colours? If you're thinking about a health product for um, men in their 40s, you probably want quite um, classic colours, steel greys, um, vivid orange with the grey, things that look quite classy um, and quite adult. If you're looking for something for people your age, you might have something brighter, um, but probably not as bright as if you were aiming it at two or three year old, for example. So think really carefully about the, the colour and the typography that you're going to use in your advert. And you can start researching it, pause the video here, start researching it and get an idea of what you want to use. Now you've got all those ingredients, the next stage is to consider the layout. Where are you going to put things on the page? Is the layout eye-catching? Is it easy to see from a distance? So if it's going to go on a billboard, um, you probably don't want your writing in yellow and you probably don't want small writing. You're going to want something that's big. Think about what we talked about with serif and sans serif fonts. Um, you're probably going to want um, a sans serif font if you're looking from, you know, if it's a poster from, you're going to be seeing from far away. Um, think about where the logo will go. It needs to be something quite clear. Um, we need to be able to see it quite easily. And if you're going to have any writing, where's that going to go? All right. So think about it. You could do three or four little sketches of that if you like, just little very simple ones, stick men type sketches. And then it's time to make your poster or advert. So you can use a computer, you can draw it by hand, you can cut um, an image of the um, product out of a magazine if you've got one and stick it on and then design the rest of it around it in pens or pencils that's absolutely fine so it's up to you so go and finally this is the challenge but I want as many of you as possible to have a go at this because it allows you to show off how well you thought about this okay I want you to annotate your product so you can get a bigger bit of paper and stick it behind what you've done, or you can um, screenshot it if you've done it on the computer, put it in the Word document, shrink it down a bit, um, crop it if you need to, and then annotate it around there, okay? Think about how we've annotated. So you draw a line out and you write an explanation at the other end of the line of what you've done. So I've labeled the techniques you've used. So you might label the typeface. So you might put Times New Roman or you might put um, Arial or something like that. Explain why you've used them. Sans serif font can be seen from further away. Um, uh, curly font that looks like handwriting suggests a personal touch, which will appeal to uh, women in their 40s. OK, um, think about what the effect on the target audience would be. The bright colours of green and yellow make the product seem fresh and healthy. Um, which will make people more inclined to want to buy it. The colours of rich chocolate brown and dark pink suggest luxury and delicious chocolatey goodness, you know. <laughs> so label it with that. And when you've done that, and you get as much down as you can, when you've done that, either take a photo or save it and upload it to Google Classrooms or give it to your teacher in your next lesson because this will be your last lesson online um, for the moment, hopefully forever let's, let's say um, and you'll be back into school later in the week and you can see your teachers and frankly we can't wait to see you so get this work done make it really good ready to impress your teacher and we'll see you later in the week have a good day and we can't wait to see you